So we just arrived at this amazing pyramid site called Cacaxla. Now this is 45 minutes north of Puebla and Cholula. And it's a very interesting place because it's linked with the Olmec. It could have dating that goes back to around 600 to 800 BC. Officially, they don't suggest that's the case. They say 600 AD to 1200 AD, something like this. But they dominated this whole area. This was on the mountain top here. And it's just an amazing site. It's got some beautiful murals showing different aspects of warfare that the local uh, culture uh, were part of. But it's also got this sacred feminine fertility aspect to it. Where, so it's a ceremonial site with a sort of a uh, goddess kind of cult, but also it had elements of warfare associated with it. So it's a very, very interesting place, a unique place, kind of in the middle of Mexico, really. Um, down south, you know, south of the Olmec land, north of Cholula, uh, and it's got Cholulan influences most certainly. So what we're looking at here is like what's called the Gran Basamento or the Great Base or Foundation and the Plaza of the Three Pyramids. Not much of it has been unearthed, um, but there was a single society dominating this part of the area. It was linked with Xochitl, which is the site we're going to visit today as well, which has even got circular pyramids at that site. And the early inhabitants, who they were, is technically, you know, officially a mystery, but clearly this is Olmec. This has got influences of the Olmec here. Um, and there's still question marks about that. Here, you can just see a kind of map of the area, just to give some idea of this huge kind of pyramid platform. So on this board, you can see the Grand Basamento or the great kind of base of the site. It's nine construction phases, apparently, not just one, but there was limestone kind of construction mostly. And uh, it's been, worked with and built over many many times so we're just up on like pretty much the second level here and you can see the great base or the great platform up there are the murals behind the glass we're going to go and look at in a moment and you can just see it goes on and on and on and further over there behind all this we actually have more pyramids there's like several pyramids also associated with the site they're very much like Teotihuacan uh, or Cholula even and so there are clearly influences from various different places it really is gigantic look at this huge roof over the top as well so this was the palace of Kakaxla, the ruling class. They've had 200 sacrificed children in this spot. So sacrifice was a big thing with the people of this site. Just down here is what's called the Temple of Venus. So this is due to the paintings on the columns. If you look closely, the man has a scorpion's tail and the figure appears to be a woman, it's the other figure. Um, and that I think is the planet Venus represented in the shape of a severed snail, which I believe um, is kind of on the center of uh, the kind of belt buckle really. This could symbolize an astronomical event or date associated with Venus, but it was recognized also Venus was Quetzalcoatl in ancient Mexico. So these murals are probably the most famous ones at the site. This is known as the Red Temple. Um, if you look closely, you'll notice representations of corn cobs, cocoa beans, aquatic animals, birds, and a feathered serpent, which is clearly Quetzalcoatl. Uh, there's also a man with a basket used to transport objects. Now this whole basket thing is really interesting because if we look more closely here, you know, what is he really carrying there? This is just an amazing, amazing mural. I mean, look at it. So he's carrying some kind of basket, but is that like the man bag? Is that like a representation of the man bag? That's maybe what it would have looked more like when it was uh, originally done. 
and there it is down there and what's left of it and it's been well preserved they put this huge roof on and so you know the representation there again is of Quetzalcoatl so we have this connection with the Olmecs, Teotihuacan, Cholula and other places he was a prevalent god in ancient Mexico you can see another view of the red palace because of the, uh, the beautiful carving that was there so this is actually a reconstruction of what was actually there and so this is unusual this kind of gate kind of you know with crisscross look this is actually completely original there's nothing quite like this anywhere at any other site in mexico apparently in the distance there in the background we have the great volcano we have further pyramids up there which i believe is the other site that we're going to go and visit and we see mosaic patterns and we see these beautiful kind of stucco kind of columns with circles and other things as part of the design get more close get in more closely so you can see it better just see the uh the, the detail on this what a vast place it's like a vast pyramid platform here in the center of mexico so here we have um lots and lots of beautiful paintings with steps going up these are all kind of covered up i'll give you more detailed images in the video but these are open for discussion but i'll show you some uh i'll show you these in much more detail but look at the colors i mean the blue is called it's called kind of called maya the blue it comes from a certain pigment that's found um in the area the red is obviously iron oxide so i'll just get close up to these so you can see them this is actually what's painted on the mural and uh it's all in spanish but look, almost like egyptian don't they some of these look at the wing the wing the kind of quetzalcoatl type figure there absolutely amazing this one's doing some kind of yoga move i'll just scan along the whole thing so if you pick up anything please mention it in the comments below i'll put more detailed photos in as well so you can see it more clearly absolutely amazing this is interesting this is like uh <laughs> so they re they buried over like ritually certain murals and then painted other murals and covered them with different things over periods of time this is where this took place you can just see a representation of this of what they were doing here so the mural with the battle and the man bird and the man feline murals partially destroyed and covered and they did this in order to create new spaces such as the sunken patio they were known as ritual burials absolutely amazing look at i mean look at the site now look at that absolutely huge pyramid platform and it goes all the way around here and we've almost like got a little pyramid just on the end here so in this room down here this is where they kept you see those small niches in the right hand room there that's where they kept parrots and parakeets and different colors probably quetzal birds as well and this is where they kind of trained them and kept them and uh it's pretty amazing that they actually did that here and they got a representation of that on the sign here what that would have looked like so we're just leaving the main plaza here on top of the great platform we're standing right above where some of the most important murals are and just down here we have a few mule murals you can just see those behind there um, they are absolutely stunning what amazing pieces of art these are look at these that is absolutely amazing and then we've got this one here. it's carved and painted all the way around kind of both sides so in this room we have both the birds and the jaguars represented these are clearly brilliant artists so you know on the left we have what looks like um a man kind of feline you can see the feline beneath his feet kind of wrapping around going down the left side vertically down horizontally along the bottom on the right one you can actually see a serpent kind of wrapping around underneath so this is like again probably a representation of Quetzalcoatl and look at his skin color his skin color is black now this is really interesting so this could prove this connection with the Olmecs which you know some people suggest they're kind of black Africans or dark-skinned 
Um, and we have traditions even of Quetzalcoatl in some old um, stories of him being black skinned. So this is really, really interesting. Really interesting. And then uh, if we look in more detail here, this shows you the feline. And this shows you the kind of Quetzalcoatl figure with the, with the sort of black face. That's really interesting because it's almost like the serpent may go around the top as well. It's been cut off there. So this could be very much like the monument where we have Quetzalcoatl surrounded by the serpent at Laventa. So this could show yet another connection between these two great sites. Here is one of the mu murals from Cacaxla Xochitl, which we visited already on this trip. These have been perfectly reconstructed. Look at this. I think some of this could be original. And this is the other, the other frieze, the other doorway. Absolutely amazing. You see it's like a feathered serpent figure. And you look at this carefully. As I pointed out already in the video at the site, you've got like a serpent running around the edge here, all the way up, and it goes, probably goes all the way around with plumes, wings, then you have the great god who's dark skinned, yeah, make note of that, suggesting a possible Olmec influence, and one of the earliest depictions of Quetzalcoatl has him as being dark skinned, so this is very, very interesting in its own right. And we have more detail of the other frieze here, so just going to add this to the video so you can get a sense the, what it would have originally looked like with all the vibrant colours and wonderful look to this particular painting. So this is also from the site. You can actually see the inlaid teeth. So this is absolutely mind-blowing. So this is actually from the site we visited. Got some other pieces here as well on display. Beautiful little spiral piece here. These paintings appear to portray the Birdman and the Feline Man, which really is Quetzalcoatl and the Weird Jaguar, both that originally came from Olmec land. Now these are probably priests of the Olmecs or Zikalankas who inhabited Caxla, supposedly, you know, from this era, they say 600 to 900 AD. But because the Birdman is associated with Quetzalcoatl, who taught the people the arts and sciences of you know agriculture and other such things that we have to we have to suggest that this tradition was widespread in this part of the country and that Quetzalcoatl was the founding god that maintained itself here and so this could be significant agriculturally they know they were growing food here and they, he could have brought the arts and the sciences of fertility and agriculture with him so now we're standing on the very northern side of uh, the massive pyramid platform. It raises way above me here. Really interesting because this is like north, south, east and west. Plus they had connections with Venus. They may have been marking that in some of the murals, observing that from here. And I'm sure the pyramids around this area are kind of connected with that. They're kind of, this was like part of a sacred mountaintop observatory. So this site's really interesting because it seems like this could be connected with the Olmec. Traditionally, it's the Olmeca Zikalanka people were, were part of this site. Back in the 16th century, this was first mentioned by Diego Munoz Camargo, uh, who was a historian. He believed that this shows clear signs of Olmec activities. Around when the fall of Cholula happened, about 650 to 750 AD, Cacaxla may have taken over the reins of power from that particular area. They're both in view of the sacred mountain. They both worship Quetzalcoatl. Clearly you can see that with all the murals here. And it does suggest that this could have been one of the sites that the Olmecs were involved with when they kind of moved and migrated from the heartland in uh, the Gulf Coast of Mexico. So amazingly, the great base or the Grand Basamento, the platform here is 200 meters long, 25 meters tall, and it contains everything. There's, there's a few sort of satellite pyramids nearby, which we'll have a look at on the way out. And it really is a stunning place, and it's such a delight to come here. I'm absolutely blown away by this place. So we're going to go and check out the nearby site, which has got these circular pyramids. 
Um, and yeah, well, thanks for watching anyway. We hope you enjoy this quick visit to this obscure site. So we're just at the southern end of the site here. And behind this, behind us here, we actually have these mounds. Now these are probably satellite pyramids. There's another one over there as well. These have not been excavated. In fact, not much around the platform has been excavated. It's mainly the platform itself. And yeah, you can just see the southern end here. And yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of a unique, interesting site. I mean, if you're in Puebla or Cholula, it's absolutely worth a visit. Here we have one of the satellite pyramids of Kakaxla. And you can see it's smaller, but it's got the classic steps going up. This is very similar to what we find, obviously, at Teotihuacan and many Mayan sites around the country. And so, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, one of the many satellite pyramids. This one's actually been excavated. Most of them haven't. Uh, and you can see examples of that just here. I'm just going to walk by that in a moment. So there's still unexcavated areas. There's still a lot to be unearthed. And I'm absolutely convinced this is linked with the Olmecs. It's one of the Olmec sites that's not classed as Olmecs, although in the 16th century, a certain historian did do it, did class it as Olmec. So I find that quite interesting. So that's another pyramid that's yet to be excavated. Whereas this, this one has been excavated they closed it all up you can't go in this particular one at the moment obviously we have the main mega platform over in that direction so we're just leaving Kakaxla now it's been an interesting site we've been leaving it for the last 20 minutes it's such a huge thing to walk around and I'm very kind of impressed by it not really megalithic in any way but it's got qualities that link it with the Olmecs, which is what fascinates me. So we're now going to go to the other site. It's another pyramid site. It's literally a kilometer away. It's like less than a mile away, but you've got to drive for 20 minutes, the long way around to get there. And this is all part of one great complex. So thanks for watching Megalithomaniacs. I appreciate your time, you know, exploring with me to these obscure places and keep watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please become a patron if you can. <clears throat> we fund this all personally. It all comes out of our own pocket just for the sheer thrill of adventure and traveling. And any support is welcome. So again, we'll see you next time.